This thing pulled up all the way. What's with the pants? I've got my zombie princesses on <laughs> because you need like tight fitting um, pants on when you go into a thrift store. And I'm going to a thrift store today. What are you getting? I'm not sure yet. You... I already ordered a butter dish on Amazon. Oh, okay. So don't go get some clothes for yourself. Right. But I found a good deal for a butter dish on Amazon. It was $10.99, but it's a double wide. Double wide. And then it's like a dish, a deep dish with a lid on it mm -hmm. that's got a rubber seal around it so that bugs and stuff can't get in. That is nicer than what I found at And Home it's got like a little knife, butter knife that sits into a cutout groove on the top so you can just take the butter knife and... How do they come up with these things? I don't know. But just trial and error, right? I actually ordered two of them. One of them without the butter knife, which was $2 cheaper. And that one can go in the refrigerator because do you know how many times we cut a half a stick of butter and then it gets thrown into the refrigerator and I start cleaning out the refrigerator and there's like six half used sticks right. of butter. Yeah. It's like socks. So I figure we can just have it in there like that. Butter is the socks of the refrigerator. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and MeWe. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. That's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Speaking of MeWe, you need to give me the link for MeWe so that I can put it down in the description. I have no idea how to get in there. Do we need an invite to get in there? What is the deal with MeWe? But like, yeah, I don't know how to get in there and that's why there's no link down below. So hopefully there'll be a link down below on this video. Well, I think you need to make yourself a profile and then we'll decide if you can join the MeWe Two Crazy Ketos family. What do you guys think? Should we let Joe in? Leave in the comments down below. Should we really? let you in our group? <laughs> really? You, you gotta, know, you're gonna have to answer all the questions. I woke up in a really, really good mood. Am I and you're telling you? me I can't be in part of my own group. Taken. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay, I think so we'll let him in. I did. I woke up in a great mood. I feel really good. Me too. I feel really good. And it's not just like a high off of the live stream yesterday. Because it's such a great live stream last But night. I will say this with that live stream. If you didn't see the interview with Dr. Bear, I'm gonna leave a link for it right over Rachel's head. Normally I wouldn't put a link for a live stream, but Dr. Barry answered really a lot answered of a lot of interesting questions. People questions from our Patreons as well as just questions that we had, like why can Rachel only have one cup of coffee? And why is it okay that her coffee mug is like the size that it is and that's fine? Why not chicken? Why not chicken? Butter, bacon, and eggs. Yep, like so go watch that live stream if you didn't and if you did watch it, thank you so yeah. much, we really appreciate it. It was a great time. No, but I woke up, I was on such a high from the live stream, I didn't even want to eat. Like I wasn't hungry, which is kind of cool because you, normally when you're in a bad mood, you all of a sudden get hungry. But it was kind of cool to feel my body being like, you're not hungry. You're good. Like you're just super excited right now. That pork belly was crying for me though. <laughs> it's so good. And while we've got it, man, I'm enjoying it. So, um, but I did get up and I was proud of myself because I went into that bathroom and I'm like, I feel good. I don't know if my clothes feel the way I want them to feel, but I feel good. I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I'm like, you're not lying to me today. Really? I felt like, you know, okay, I'm going to show this not today, but at the end I started noticing, boy, shirts are really loose, but pants don't seem to be any looser. And if anything, possibly a little bit tighter. What does that mean? I started realizing that 
the the fat that was up here is gone and I've got more sca sagging skin and so it's coming down and so I was like playing I was going like floppity flop you know how you play with your arms I'm doing that with my belly whereas before it was super hard right because it was filled it was filled and it's not filled anymore I'm experiencing the same exact thing it's coming from here down like we have started you know measuring ourselves and of course as always I lose inches around my neck I'm gonna be well, a, it's a pretty neck well thank you I feel like I'm gonna be a turkey before all this is over but everything is like is moving down like right. it's as it's emptying out it's like your it's face starting up here and then your neck and then down here and yeah so it's moving down and it does make the the skin travel a little bit yeah i do advocate compression clothes mm -hmm. to kind of help direct the skin right as it's emptying and it makes you out feel better. it does make you feel better like where you know where is the skin going to be going right i think it helps train the skin but yeah, same for me. So it is. It's it's got to go somewhere though. It I, makes I was sense. having fun going floppity 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 flop. Now is it loose skin? Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'd rather have loose skin than a big belly. And yeah. uh, you know, I know that it'll go away. It went away last time. And I don't want to ruin everything for everybody. We're building up the anticipation for the end, especially because we just added like another what, 10, 20, 12 days onto this I'm challenge. I'm happy about um, that. So we were we took some extra pictures yesterday to see like where are we now? Do we see a difference? Because again, we always say the mirror is a liar. Except for this morning, it it was telling me you look good. It had to give it to you. Is yeah. that it? But I, the first thing we noticed when we looked at our pictures is our faces. Yes. Like wow, what a slimming down in our faces in just two weeks. The other thing I noticed is my back boobs are back down from like a C to an A. Nice. You know, that's, I get like weird fat in the back. Right. So instead of strapping a corset on that baby and like <laughs> really having big back boobs, they're, they're starting to go away. So what I was gonna say, the reason I was so proud of myself is I went into that bathroom and I looked at that scale after the mirror said, I'm not gonna lie to you today. And I'm like, I wanna get on that scale. And I didn't. Never gonna get it, never gonna get it. I didn't get it, on that scale. Never gonna get it, get, never gonna get I it. I wanted to never get on that scale. Never gonna get it, never get it. But what happens if I get on that scale and it says, Joe, you haven't lost a pound? Yeah, then then all of a sudden, talk about deflation. Yeah. It won't be on your body. So it I'm gonna be keep in your going. Day. I'm gonna keep going keep with going. my shirt feels better. I've got flappy skin around my belly that I didn't have before. <laughs> Since when my is that like is a slimmer. great indicator, right? And I'm going to go with that. I'm in a size medium shirt. I'm going to go with that. And I don't care what that devil scale says. Well, your wife thinks you're hot. Well, thank you. So does that, does that the, the, count for anything? That Not never really. works when I tell you you're sexy. I know. I, it, it should just... work for more, right? Okay, so... We are starting off the day with a coffee. If you are curious how much coffee is this, I make up a pot and I fill it up to the nine cup mark. And then we just divvy that out. So it's basically I four. I divvy more, probably. Like it's just about four to four. I think it's like five ounce cups. Um, I know. Anybody who thinks that a five ounce serving of coffee is an actual cup of coffee, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what... Maybe a restaurant. What? Yeah. I never understand why when you go into a diner and they bring you this little tiny cup, all oh, free refills. Well, now I just got to keep bothering you every five minutes for more coffee. I think the person who is making the five ounce cup of coffee is also divvying out the nuts. Because that's <laughs> what, right? Like the serving of nuts. And here's also a serving of coffee. Right. Yeah. Here. That little bag that you get on an airplane. Working like, together. There's like three almonds in there. Yeah. Like what am I supposed Ooh. to do with this? Uh, this may be a, like a, a, a two serving. <laughs> Um, so yeah, cup of coffee a piece, one tablespoon of butter. I am excited about our butter dish because now I get to leave butter on the counter. And the funny part We've is- We've reached that age where a butter dish excites us. Caleb was like, what do you mean we're leaving butter on the counter? Because Caleb is Rachel's son and is like, something's wrong with that. And I'm like, you know, you are also your grandmother's grandson who loves to leave butter on the she counter. She does love to leave it and out. Because she knows what's good. But at least he won't have to stare at the stick of butter. 
Right. You he have will, to look at it. He'll stare at a dish. And at least we won't have to wonder, did the cats walk over and lick that butter? Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know I'm, I'm glad that we're checking that box. I'm not going to lie. Okay. I'm glad we're checking that box. <laughs> okay. So I, Anthony is in the other room going, oh my gosh, will you guys get going? We have work to do. We do have a game tonight. So we're going to head out the door. I need to very quickly, before we do, go inject our eye around with a bunch of butter. Butter. So that when I get home, we can throw it on the grill. My game tonight, I have to leave around 5.30 or so. And uh, tomorrow I have late games. So oh, I, at nice. least I, I don't have to get up at, you know, six o'clock in the morning. The butt crack of dawn. Oh my gosh, smell this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I want crab. <laughs> There's garlic in that, isn't there? I put about a half a teaspoon of garlic uh, in the whole thing. I just want crab to dunk in that right now. Well, it's going inside of the roast beef. Okay, so we got a syringe. I bought a nice meat injector, and of course, I can't find my meat injector. You know, you find these things, and you, yep. oh, you have butter sticking out of places. So you, you buy these things and then when you want to use them, you can't find them. So when you do this, make sure that you are not doing it in an area where you're afraid to get butter on things because it's a stringer piece of meat and you could all of a sudden have butter flying out of different parts of the beef. You could spring a butter leak? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Like look, it's coming out of the front over here right now. Also, when you pull the needle out, put your finger over the hole because you're gonna get butter shooting out of it. Don't wear a shirt you care about. Now what we're going to do that there's butter all over the stove. I can't put this on the butcher block right now, though, because we've got mail and stuff on there. Plus, that would just shoot butter all over the place. We're going to wrap this entire thing in saran wrap. I don't have saran wrap, though. I have this stuff. The same thing, but we're going to just cut it. Wrap this, put it back in the refrigerator until I come home. That'll trap all that butter in there. Merry Christmas! <laughs> we get everything post-holiday, including our saran wrap. If it's got a spider on it or Santa on it or whatever, Easter eggs, we can always get it at a deep, deep clearance discount and we just, we buy a ton of it. We don't care. You know, once a year we're correct and we have the right Ziploc bag or paper towel for the right occasion. How many of you guys do the same thing where the day after Halloween, the day after Christmas, the day after Easter, you run to the store and get all the 50% off clearance. Let us know down below in the comments. The best one we ever got though was Halloween themed kitty litter. What a deal we got on that. I don't know why someone thought in a focus group, you know what, we need to theme kitty litter because they're just, you know, using it to go to the bathroom. But yeah, we got a super deal on that. I cannot express how happy this car freshie makes me feel. This was by Creative Vibes by Brianna, B-R-Y-N-N-A. -N -N she is on Facebook, just a delightful young lady and i think this is just so adorable she makes custom car freshies and all kinds of stuff just really neat if you want to check her out on facebook this is so exciting i am here at the post office dropping off some patreon swag and filling some water bottle orders and then i'm going to head over to the dollar tree because i need some labels and i also want to check out what they have as far as halloween goodies that are non-edible. I feel super blessed to have a Dollar Tree right down the street from me. I can walk to it. Let's go see what's inside. Okay, so I got home from work. I'm gonna go ahead and clean out the Kamado Classic so that I can put on the rotisserie and then uh, get everything going. But I'm also kind of hungry, so I'm gonna clean that out and then I'm gonna make myself a couple eggs because it's gonna take a couple hours between heating up the grill and then getting the cook done. The roast is ready. We're gonna go ahead and put it on the Kamado Joe. Okay. Go ahead and adjust this over the fire and we'll be good to go. Okay, I didn't feel like cooking outside because I have everything else going. So I just threw three pieces of bacon on here. This is our bacon made just the way I like it. And then we're gonna make the eggs dirty in all of this bacon grease. Eggs are on. If you're curious, if you have this electric uh, Blackstone, 
I like to cook eggs kind of like, almost like a low and slow. I don't like to cook them on a really high heat. I feel like you get a much better flavor and a much better texture on a low heat. So I set this thing at 270 degrees to cook my eggs. So this is what happens when you try to do too many things at one time, like edit a video, look something up, get mailing out, do the barbecue. You make eggs that, in my opinion, are overcooked. Okay. Yum. Lunch time. Time for some lunch. So I've got three overcooked eggs. I've got three perfectly cooked eggs. A couple of slices of our bacon. And then I just got a couple little pieces of pork belly just because I, I want a little bit of it. All in for the pork belly. Rachel's got a bunch of pork belly and three eggs. What did you get at the dollar store? I started us out with some non-candy stuff to fill my trick-or-treat bags. Lots of, look at the unicorns. How fun are they? Um, lots of stuff. We get over 300 trick-or-treaters at our home mm -hmm. every Halloween. So I'm excited for us to get back at it. Right. With Halloween, but you, you have to prepare. Yeah. And um, I love the fact that Dollar Tree and Walmart, there's lots of opportunities. If you were the house that gave out the full bar candy, you know, like you were giving a dollar or more per kid, let's say for Halloween, there's plenty of options that are super, super fun. Stuffed animals and, you know, wish I was Barbie dolls, all kinds of things. Right. So that you can still be the star in town, but not give out candy right so i got my stuff from amazon butter i got two butter dishes so this one is for the refrigerator nice it's actually like a metal one okay just put a couple pieces of butter in there just just so that the butter is not disgusting in the fridge right i appreciate that and then i got this one which actually has a chip on it. Look at that. Oh, good. It came. It came. It came damaged. Pre Stafford. So this one is a ceramic one. Now we're gonna have to send it back. But I got butter in it already. <laughs> so we got butter. But see, look, it's got this like silicone lid to seal it shut, and it, a little. That makes me feel knife. better that it's got the lid. Yeah, but I'm I'm mad that there's a chip on there. I'm so sorry. now I have to send it back. Is there a chip on your butter? So. What are you gonna do while I'm gone? I have I have about two hours left before I have to leave. Two and a half hours. We have the uh, roast beef going right now. Mm. I'm leaving at five thirty, so it'll probably be done in about an hour. Okay. This is all new to us with the Kamado Joe and using the rotisserie. So I've got it going at about three hundred and twenty-five degrees on the spit over a nice piece of oak wood. So we got the charcoal in there. And I'm, I'm learning about different types of smoke types because I'm just used to the pellet grill, like set it and forget it. Isn't and, it nice? And this one is... So I already got a flavor saver there. Oh, I do? Um, is it nice that this challenge is helping you to learn new cooking techniques? It is. It's kind it, of unexpected. Yeah, it is. And it's interesting because a lot of the stuff I'm learning is from Smoking Dad Barbecue, who actually did keto for a while. So I've been so messaging exciting. back and forth with him about, you know, different keto options on the grill and stuff like yeah. that. So... So we're gonna finish eating. We will check in a little later. I still need to take a shower, but I was like messing with the grill and there's like no sense in taking a shower and then getting out there with the smoking wood. You, you, you like the smell of the I anyway. love the smell of the smoker. It's like the perfect cologne. So my phone is alerting me from the meter thermometer that the roast is done. We're gonna go ahead and check it with the instant read though because sometimes you know you put that in and it's in a different spot and the rest of the meat's not done. So we're gonna go ahead and check it. Okay, temperature is right where I've wanted it, so let's go. Oh, wow. That smells so good. Let me take you in for a close-up. Look at that. Does that not look delicious? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take this off of the spit. Get a little bit of char on there. Look at that. Oh my gosh, that looks delicious. Okay, we're gonna take this inside and we're gonna wrap it. Look at that. Oh wow. Doesn't that smell delicious? Mm hmm Okay. Whoa. Okay, I took off the string. Oh, wow. Oh, 
Um, yeah, it's probably like, it's like a medium, but. That is beautiful. Would have liked it a little bit rarer. Oh my God. All right, here goes. Mmm. Probably wow. rested a little bit too long. I should have taken it off a little bit earlier. I took it off at 125 degrees. I should have taken it off at like a 115. That is delicious though. Good news is we got four more. Mmm. That is awesome. Okay. I gotta go to my game. I'm sorry. You're gonna miss me. I will definitely miss you. Yeah. You're gonna sneak a bunch of beef when I'm gone? <laughs> no. Maybe eat more pork belly. I can't promise about the pork belly. Hey, all the pork belly is left. That's supposed to be mine. You keep eating all the pork belly. Sorry, Charlie. Really? Did you find anything at the thrift store? No. Um, I was totally skunked. A little bit sad about that. That's part of the thrift store, though, right? It's, but that's the fun of it. It's, it's like a treasure hunt, hunt. Right? I don't like to hunt. It's not a treasure guarantee. So we have been jumping in the pool and then rolling in the mud. Tabitha, I don't know if you realize this or not, but we are about to take a shower. We have to, we have to take a bath. Like we just, we have to do it. You're, are you in for it? Like, do, do you want it? Okay, you're rubbing on me, so you're cool with that? You're gonna get a bath? You want a bath? Okay. We are still sopping wet. We have shaken out everywhere. Now we're gonna go and just take a rest in our cage because we need to dry off. She's always so embarrassed after a bath. I don't know why. Cause you look super clean. You smell delicious. You smell super yummy. Wait till daddy sees. Wait till daddy sees his girl. Oh yeah, more water. Ah! Uh, hey. Zima, here I are you watching the hungry horde i'm in the hungry horde that what are you doing i'm watching the, uh their live stream they made the funnest thing tonight it was a foot it was like meatloaf but it was in the shape of a foot it was the perfect halloween food but she used a bone marrow bone a marrow bone for part of the to help shape it and now all I can think of is I want marrow bone. So what's on your face? I'm getting pretty fied for you. you while you're you're gone. already pretty fied. I don't need to get more pretty fied. It's one of the Redmond, like they have a clay mask in a tube. Which one is that? It's mint. You can smell it. Mm -hmm. It smells good. I'm hungry. Well, I'll wash my face. Okay. I'm going to go slice up the roast and I'll take a shower after we eat. Good game. <laughs> 57 to 7. Look at how, what do you think? Look at how thinly sliced you got this. I wish I had like a higher quality mm. slicer because then you could get it really thin. Oh my goodness, that's good. Thank you. Remember, this is a, a leaner cut of meat, so you got to add some fat to it. That doesn't make me upset. So. So it wasn't quite a game. No, it was, it was really bad. But it's interesting. So I got to go back and watch. So the school we were at was Cardinal Gibbons High School. Mm -hmm. And um, a friend of mine or a friend of ours, he, why don't you move over this way a little bit. Uh, his son graduated from there and is the quarterback at University of Kentucky. How nice. And here's the cool thing is, he is featured on a documentary on Netflix mm -hmm. called QB1, where they're following high school quarterbacks and showing what it takes to get a college scholarship. And he was like one of the top high school quarterbacks in the country. And evidently, me and Scott and our crew are in that, in one of the... Uh, episodes. Really? So Scott was saying that oh, game so footage. they were filming a game when we were the officials. How nice. So that would be from like three years ago, I guess, because I mean, I guess he's a junior now in in Kentucky, but isn't that wow. kind of cool? So now I got to go watch the documentary series to 
find out which episode you may see my bald head or something in. How cute. So you just look for the bald head. Look for the bald head. And at least it, it was, that would have been after I lost the weight. So you're not looking for a 300 pound guy. You're looking for a 180 pound guy. But yeah, it was, it was a pretty horrible game. I'm sorry. It started off 21 to nothing and then they gave up one touchdown and you're like, oh, we're never going to get to a running clock. But then it was like, bang, 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 bang. And, but it's the one school where it's literally like Friday Night Lights. One of the problems here in South Florida is we have so many schools yeah. that there's not big crowds at the game. Whereas if you go to like North Carolina or Texas, like the whole town shuts down that because there's like feel. one high school and everyone else is traveling from like 50, 60 miles away. Whereas we've got 18 high schools within 10 miles, 15 miles of each other. So the talent right. is all here, but it's a little Spread watered out. down. So we have a lot of like these blowout games, mm -hmm. but there it's like going to a Friday night's lights game. I mean, just masses of people and, and they're all tailgating in, in the parking lot and, and everything. That makes it so much fun. Oh, it's a lot. It's a lot of fun to officiate when you look up and like the stands are actually full. That's nice. But you know what? It's still football. It's kind of cool because I've been officiating most of the kids that you see playing there, like since they were little because... You know, they go up through the Pee Wee program and then, to, and so you just, I, you notice a lot of these kids and everybody was pleasurable. So we didn't have any issues or anything like that. So that was good. So that what really did you do while I was gone? Well, we got the house cleaned. It was very important to do that. It was, it was time. Needed to deep clean that in our room. Our room was like just becoming a, a pile <laughs> of stuff and uh, deep clean the dog because the dog needed a bath badly. It was like not negotiable. Um, but I did get to be in the Hungry Horde tonight, which was really nice. And uh, they've got me craving marrow bones. So I don't know where we're going to get one. Um, might be able to get some in Wild Fork or maybe Whole Foods. We don't have a lot of local butchers, so it's a little bit harder to get that kind of stuff here. So we're on the hunt. Yeah, I want to do some roasting of marrow bones. So, I mean, I guess it's the good thing if we're going to continue the challenge because there's like other foods that I want to do that we haven't had a chance to do. And we are heading to Vegas on Wednesday evening. Somebody did ask me um, if you could only have one cooking device outside, what would you, what would you have? A panic attack? Right. <laughs> because you, I need all of these things. I need them all. I really need them all. Now, okay, so I saw that comment and I was trying to figure it out like a good way to answer it. It really is going to depend on... What you're cooking? What kind of food do you like to cook? So I would tell people, I think the most versatile thing out there is probably going to be the Blackstone. That's what I would think. Because you can cook burgers and bacon and eggs and stuff like that. But if you're looking to do more meat... It's not the Blackstone. Okay. I would get a pellet smoking grill because with the pellet grill, you know, you can smoke your meats. You can do a lot of low and slow. You can cook burgers. Now you're not going to get like that char broil that you would get the flame broil. on an open flame, Okay, but you can cook burgers by turning the heat all the way up and it's the easiest to use. I mean, we've even got a video where you're making ribs and brisket with it because it's, it it's literally set it and forget it. If money is no option, I would get, which I would love that, I can't afford it, is the, um, if you only could have one, I would get the um, Big Joe. Oh, like the, the Kamado Joe, but they have, we have the, the, we have the classic one. They have one that's called the Big Joe. Now, you can get the second generation. Right now, they're up to the third generation. It's like $2,500 for the third generation. Wow. The second generation, you can get it for, I want to say, like $1,600. So, okay. like, significant difference. And there's not a lot of differences between the second and the third generation. They, they added a slow roller. No, the second or the third generation, it's the same size, oh, okay. but they've added a couple of little accessories, which you can buy separately anyway. So you can get the second generation now and then add on the accessories and save a ton of money up front. The reason, if, that's why if money is no option, I would get that because it's capable of everything. So you can uh, do like low and slow. Right. And you can get a charbroil 
You can make pizza in there, like keto pizza, of course. Uh, but it, you can bring it all the way up to 800 degrees. Wow. So, but it, it is a little bit of work to use it. But I'm again, I'm following that Smoking Dad barbecue. And I've learned a lot. And this is like, this is our first really low and slow. And it, fantastic. I probably would have made it, taken off just slightly earlier. I think that um, my one thermometer showed that it was done and another one didn't. And I went with the other one instead of what the original one said. So I said, oh, well, I'll wait. Because one said it was 125 degrees and one said it was 110. Right. So I'm like, well, I don't want it at 110. I should have pulled it off right then and there. Um, but next one will do better. Now we'll know exactly what to do. But the, the good part is the flavor is there. You've got more meat to cook. And this so wasn't like an expensive and piece of meat. And the pork belly came out great in there. It really did. So yeah, if money's no object, I would get that. If money is an object and you want that same kind of thing, uh, come on. They actually make a kettle one, but it's not... It's not ceramic, mm -hmm. so it's it's like a traditional barbecue, but you can get a lot of the same stuff out of it. It just doesn't hold heat quite as well. But I would not I would always get a Kamado over the Big Green Egg after the research that I did. Right. Because the Big Green Egg is cheaper up front, but it comes with nothing. So by the time you buy all of the accessories, uh, you're back up to the Kamado price anyway. Just get the second generation Kamado. You'll save some money. What is your favorite cooking accessory out there? Because we've gotten a lot of accessories. Well, I mean, right now I'm enjoying the Kamado. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is we have, it's not a problem. I'm enjoying it for, I knew what we were getting when we got it. We bought the Classic, which is an 18 inch grill. The Big Joe is a 24 inch grill. So you can put a full brisket on. This one, you, it's not wide enough for that. But I knew I had the big smoker for that. Right. So I'm really enjoying that right now, but I wouldn't get rid of, I love the Blackstone because I cook all our bacon out there. And... Well, I was thinking about like accessories, like, like the rotisserie. That is such a cool thing that you're able to have now. Is there, is, is there a certain accessory that you just like better than others? You just like having the right tool for the job, no mm -hmm. matter what that job is. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I got the rotisserie just because we want to try a turkey. So we'll do a smaller turkey, and I do like roast beef, and I like rotisserie roast beef. Right. So I want to try some different things with that. That rotisserie will work on pretty much any 18-inch Kamado-style grill, so it doesn't have to be a Kamado Joe. So we can start a Brazilian steakhouse in, in the backyard. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I do want to say you can also get Costco mm -hmm. has a version of a Kamado grill. Huh. It's made by Louisiana Grill Company, which is the same company that makes Pit Boss. Mm -hmm. And it is the same size as the Big Joe. Wow. For like 700 bucks. That's a great so deal. So I would highly advise that too. If I Take can, a look at it I, at if I, can, I don't know if there's any links on their website, but I've seen it in the store. Mm -hmm. And I was researching that one too. It doesn't have quite as many of accessories, but it's... Pretty much the same thing. It's a giant ceramic grill. The one thing I'm going to say about any kind of Kamado grill, whether it's the Kamado Joe or the Big Green Egg, don't buy them used. Don't ever buy one used. Why? Because it's ceramic. Okay. And over time, the ceramic can crack. They come with a lifetime warranty. So if the ceramic does crack, mm -hmm. you get a free one or you get a replacement one. But the warranty is not transferable with any company. Oh, wow. So it's like buyer beware. Unless you're getting that thing super cheap and you are really good at inspecting it and you know exactly who was taking care of it, I would not buy one used. Because, again, if you if that dome cracks or if the bottom cracks or if the firebox cracks, it's going to cost you as much to replace that whole gr that piece as it would to go buy a brand new one. Oh, my goodness. Because they're heavy, too. So the shipping alone is heavy. But it doesn't scare you to work with it. No. And again, it's got a lifetime warranty on it. So, and again, I'm not moving around. It's just the heat. If you, especially if you're in a cold, oh, cold climate where like if you go hot to cold and if you do something wrong, it could crack. But again, if you're the original owner, it's covered under warranty. If you're buying it secondhand, no warranty. So pro column for Florida. We don't have those extremes. 
I'd just still rather hot. move to Tennessee. I know. But, like, <laughs> give us something. Give us I want a, a farm. There you go. I want to be a farmer. Sorry. Farmer Joe. It won't be as easy to crack your, your Kamado Joe, though. So, there you go. That's, Consolation prize. That's true. Okay, so I'm going to finish eating. You already finished eating. I've what, already finished. You, by the way, you ate other food, right? I did. I had a couple of pieces of uh, pork belly while you were gone. You ate all my pork belly. Up. No, you've got plenty left. I, I knew to, to make sure I left you some. I didn't want to be you that person. You like that pork belly. I really love it in the air fryer. First, you need the smoking process to make the meat incredibly tender. Mm -hmm. Just incredibly, amazingly tender. Now, you then could... Then fry it with the air fryer. You could do that in an oven. Okay. So just you're going to make it just like you make a brisket. The difference is you're not going to get the smoke flavor. Oh, they, I mean, it is tasty, but it's the... Yeah, I mean, you could try some liquid smoke, but I'm not a big fan of liquid smoke. It's the fattiness. Yeah, but so if, you, so if you've good. ever cooked a brisket in an oven, low and slow, 250 degrees, yeah. you could accomplish the same thing. Even better if you have a convection oven, because the convection oven is going to rotate the air, and then you can get the crispy fat on the top. So you don't have to have special accoutrement to no, enjoy. No, but that's why I say, like, if you could only get one thing, I'd get a smoker. Yeah. I'd probably get a, a pellet smoking grill because you could do all it. You can make your own bacon. You can make brisket. You can make ribs. You can make burgers. And if money's no object, knowing now that as I've had this grill for a couple of weeks, I love the Kamado. And it's nice with the charcoal and everything You else. find yourself reaching for that I'm grill. Finding, I'm finding... I'm enjoying it because I like the flavor of charcoal and stuff. Me too. But And the fact that with the lump charcoal... It's not like you pour the charcoal in there and then, like, you know, you have to burn through it. Whatever you don't use is there for the next use. So you burn it and then you close down the grill and then the charcoal's still there. Because remember, we used to have a retrofitted hot water heater right. tank that was... We sold that so that I could buy my first pellet grill. But that was made... I mean, it was incredible. The thing was amazing and you could cook a ton of meat at once. It was a water heater. But you had to use so much charcoal. It took, it took a bag and a half of charcoal for any cook because it was so big. You couldn't just go out there and cook a couple burgers. So we never used it. Right. We just never used it because it needed so much charcoal just to be... By the, you, by the time... It got the temperature. You're like, yeah, I don't even want to eat anymore. Well, you were you were like, let's clean out the entire freezer, right? Because if we don't make enough meat for thirty people, it's not worth even it's like deep lighting frying a it up. Turkey. We used to love deep frying a turkey. In fact, I have a, a, an electric deep fryer that I'm going to sell because we don't deep fry stuff. But we anymore. were like, what else can we fry? Because we've got all of this you peanut oil. You spend thirty dollars on oil, right? And then you would use it for a turkey. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, now what do I do? I just spent $30 on oil. So, they, I mean, we're frying up everything. Like, let me have your plate. We're going to fry it. Yeah, because so it was the same thing. I hate, while it's hot. My sister actually messaged me that they bought a half a pig. What? She was asking me, what can I do? She She's like excited to make the pork belly. She saw the video on the pork belly. That's awesome. And then she's like, and now I want to make bacon. Because oh. she said the bacon in New York is getting really expensive. She was asking what to do with the fat back. And I'm like, you can make lard with it. They you use it really for two things. Make sausage to get your sausage fattier and then make lard with it. It's not the greatest lard. You want the leaf fat is the best for lard, but it still makes a decent lard. It's just so it's got a little bit more of a pork flavor to it. Yeah. And coming from a po like mom's Polish side of the family, like Polish sausage is right. incredible. Yeah. So, uh, tomorrow I have afternoon games. We're going to get up in the morning, film keto on the couch. Poor Anthony. Anthony volunteered to work all eight games tomorrow. Wow. So, he's got to be up there. At, With I think the cock doodle gotta, do He's got to be there at 7.30 in the morning, work four games, and then I get him on my crew in the afternoon. So, of course, I'm going to get the tired Anthony. And then we'll he's have got Grace four, him, four more games. Says who? <laughs> Says Mama Bear. <laughs> So yeah, he's got eight games tomorrow on the on the floor. Hopefully, it's not too hot tomorrow. I hope not, because that's a long day. It's like eight in the morning until about nine, ten o'clock at night on the football field. But you know what? He's young. He's twenty one years old. They asked me to do it. I'm like, ah, no. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. I'm I'm old enough to know better. You're right. So 
Well, that's gonna be the, today's video. If you like seeing videos like this, check out some of the other videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till tomorrow. Bye. Bye.